G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of reviews into medieval equipment and weapons that are for sale all over the place. You'll find lots of DIY videos into crafting, costuming and furniture. And you'll find lots of analysis into the medieval period. Why did things turn out the way that they did? In this video today we're going to take a look at a peasant's or an everyday person's evening meal or a supper. So, in the medieval period, in the Dark Ages, the main meal of the day was eaten during the middle of the day because obviously you could see what you were doing, it didn't cost you anything to light the, the area. Uh, in the evenings you'd be using candlelight or oil lanterns and that kind of thing. That all costs money. Okay, so in, in the uh, earlier part of the day you might be eating a fairly simple, very quick kind of meal before you set out for your work. So you might eat something as simple as uh, ale and bread, maybe some leftovers from the night before, that kind of thing, and then head out for your day. During the medieval period and the Dark Ages, uh, life was a very labour-intensive existence. Warriors would be training a large part of the day, much as soldiers of today train fairly uh, long hours. You'd have uh, the workers of the medieval period or the Dark Ages, people like blacksmiths, carpenters, stonemasons, traders, all of those kind of people would be, leaving, uh, would be leading very labour intensive lives and therefore it would be in the noble's interest, uh, the earl, the baron or uh, perhaps a member of the royal family, that kind of thing to make sure their people were getting an adequate diet, in other words, to uh, ensure their people uh, had enough fuel for the day to make them productive. Okay, so let's take a look at the meal. Well, what might a medieval person or uh, someone during the Dark Ages have eaten during the day? So what might someone from the medieval period or the Dark Ages have eaten at supper time? Okay, so we have a cup of ale. It's a, it's a falsity to think that medieval people only drank ale or mead, that kind of thing. They did drink water, but many water sources were uh, at best dodgy and certainly very easy to poison. So during the harrying of the north, uh, William the Conqueror's army had poisoned much of the water supplies in the whole north of England. And according to the Doomsday Book, well over a... 100,000 people, uh, residents of, if you like, modern day England, were killed through starvation and poisoning. So it's very easy to understand why people during this time would be skeptical on the water supplies. However, in this example, I have a cup of uh, basic pale ale. I'm just going to place that down just there. Alrighty, so. If we can have a little bit of a look, uh, I might just step a little closer. If we take a look here, we have uh, a brown bread. This is a barley and rye bread, commercially available. Um, and I will show you a video in a few weeks time on how to make this bread. We have some ham off the bone. We have some apple, uh, all very freely available. We have goat's cheese, which is probably the most we have goat's cheese here, which is probably the most likely cheese that someone during this period would have eaten. Uh, we also have some other cheeses, which are basic dairy cheeses. This is an Old English uh, cheddar variety, and this is a Leicester cheddar variety. Uh, and we have a Jarlsberg just over there, because I'm a big fan of Jarlsberg. But all of this food would have been very easily available to anyone in the, the lower classes, so the peasantry, the yeomanry, uh, lower born free people, for them to be able to consume. And as I say, these kind of the trades of the time, whether you're a warrior, whether you're a, um, a tradesperson such as a stonemason or a carpenter or a blacksmith, whether you're um, someone who is a trader, uh, or whether you work in fabrics, that kind of thing. This, these are all very labour-intensive jobs 
and you would require a great deal of protein in your diet which would be achieved through cheeses, meats, the most common meat that would have been eaten and there would have been a, eaten a lot of pork. Um, the reason for that is that uh, pigs are able to give birth to uh, usually each time somewhere around a dozen piglets sometimes as much as um, 15 or even 20 in some breeds. So it's very easy for pigs to reproduce. Uh, they don't take long for a gestation period, um, unlike uh, sheep and goats who only produce you know, one or two young per year. Uh, and therefore pork would have been a very easily available uh, food source. Most peasants, most free people would have had uh, a pig or pig or multiple pigs in their um, living on their house and land. Um, fantastic way to deal with waste, any of the kitchen scraps and that kind of thing. It's illegal to feed pigs in Australia anyway. Um, kitchen scraps these days because of the concerns around um, uh, CJD, Carlos Yuckholt disease, mad cows disease, that kind of thing. Uh, alrighty guys, so I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I posted. Unfortunately I've been very consumed by family law. Um, but I really hope we, we enjoyed today's video. This is a really interesting insight into the diet of um, the lower classes and, and what most people would have been able to eat in the, in the evening throughout the whole Dark Ages and Medieval period. Uh, alrighty guys, well um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.